gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, you know what I lost? I lost my MP3 because I turned the music off the last the last video. I think this is she's got, she's got a way about her. This is Billy Joel. And we need to play that on the speaker system. Because this is Billy Joe, y'all know what I'm saying? Billy, go ahead and let them know. Thank you, Billy. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, got something we need to talk to you about. We just did a video that is highly controversial, and a lot of people are not going to appreciate it. And sorry, but it is what it ain't. Okay, just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we want to do, I'm downloading a software. It's an accounting software. It's called DRPU. And this is one of the softwares that I'm going to introduce this to you first before we get into our conversation. Because we were telling everybody they need to start using the accrual method. Now, a lot of work needs to be done. A lot of work needs to be done. And so at SACOM, what we're doing, and I am letting you know we are doing this as an organization. Ladies and gentlemen, this software is Aronium. Aronium! It's free. At least this version is free. If you want to have more capabilities and you have to pay for it, Aronium decided to give you a lot of features with the free version. So appreciate it, thank them, and use their software. That's what I'm saying. It's free, 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 free. Okay. Aronium, A-R-O-N-I-U-M. There it is right there in front of you. Aw. It does do the password thing, and I, I don't really like the password thing, but because it is an accounting software, this is for anybody who owns a business, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, you can do the cash or the credit method or the debit method. This is uh, actual accounting. If you set up your customers, anybody who owes you a debt, United States government, whoever it is, you got a... Arbitration award, that's the product you're selling. Selling, You get to label it however you want. This software is pretty extensive, okay? So it's free, okay? All you got to do is type it in Google and go to the site and download it, okay? All right. So we're going to, I'm going to shut it off. Because that was the point of that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I have to do is now I now have to show you. Let me pause you for a second. I got to pause you. I don't want to pause you. I just got it. Uh oh, I did it again. Get on out of there. This is Michael Jackson. And you know what? I forgot what the name of the song is. That's why I have to go there. Oh. <laughs> Somebody that rocked this world. Hold on, y'all. Be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to turn Michael and the rest of the crew off for now because this is a serious topic and we need to talk about it. I know, I know, I know. Don't worry about it. Just go with the flow. Okay, just go with the flow. Ladies and gentlemen, first, you guys need to understand this. Tax credits are dollar for dollar. Okay, just get that in your head. Tax credits are dollar for dollar. How do you get a tax credit? Does anybody know? Well, we have a document on our website where we put the documents up there, and it's in the we, – well, we do give it to all of our new set packers. They get the document talking about tax credits. And one of the things, it shows that after 100 
in 80 days of an outstanding debt, it becomes a tax credit if you choose, if you elect to cancel the debt. 1099C, automatic tax credit. That tax credit is dollar for dollar. Pay attention. I love tax credits. Tax credits, which are dollar for dollar reductions in old taxes, are distinctly different from refunds because they are applied, applied before the calculation of a refund. Ladies and gentlemen, uh uh. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a bankruptcy code. Okay, I want you to understand that is not true. Pay attention. Want you to understand that it's not true. The amount of any overpayment to be refunded. See, the statutory framework for TOP. This is the. I know it doesn't stand for tax overpayment, but it's the tax offset program. So this is the tax offset program that the treasury runs. Okay. The amount of the overpayment is to be refunded. Pay attention. The amount of the overpayment is to be refunded. Only if the application of credits result in an overpayment of taxes will there be a refund subject to offset under TOP. Only if the application of the credits, your tax credits, results in an overpayment. Oh, you gave us too much tax credits, dollar for dollar of taxes. Will there be a refund? We're going to give you a refund for the overpayment. Okay? Remember the phrase overpayment. We're going to give you a refund for that. Okay? Just keep that phrase in your head. Subject to an offset under the tax offset program. Now, remember, they said that a tax credit is distinctly different from refunds. Let's see if that's true. This is Henry Mc. Coy. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to this. You guys need to really pay attention. Rather, the credit is defined by the Internal Revenue Code as a tax overpayment. Is defined by the Internal Revenue Code, not the IRS, the Internal Revenue Code statute, as a tax overpayment as a tax overpayment what's an overpayment the credit is defined as a tax overpayment to the extent that the amount allowed as credit exceeds the individual tax liability and the taxpayer receives that amount as a tax refund okay the credit equals 10 percent of the purchase price of the resident the maximum credit is $4,000 allowed for married individuals filing separate return. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to find this. This has nothing to do with the maximum amount of credits allowed. You're going to see in just a second. I was doing a consult this morning. The individual asked a specific question, so I told him the first place you need to go is case tax to get a better understanding. And we put it in there, tax credits are dollar for dollar, and I read this, and I told him, you know what? We're going to go here. Pay attention, 26 U.S.C. 6401. 26 U.S.C. 6401. Write it down. You're going to regret it if you don't. Ladies and gentlemen, 26 U.S.C. 6401. Okay. Told you about overpayment. Woo-wee. Man, we're going to do some overpayment here. We need to find out. We're going to give them more than what they asked for. Remember how I told you you want to give them more? Remember? Go back and look. All the way back in April and March of this year, I told y'all y'all were going to give them more. That's why we were doing 31%. However, we were looking at it wrong. It is not the 31% that they get. Ladies and gentlemen, let the debtor pay the taxes. Do your 1099Cs. Let the debtor pay the taxes do 1099Cs. Many of you who are going to try to do 1099Cs, you're going to do them wrong. So let's help you out. We're going to give you the biggest advice in the first place. Call the IRS. Order 100 1099Cs. Just order 100 1099Cs. If you got a lot of debtors, then order 200. Don't get stupid. 
Oh God, don't bring that type of attention to yourself. Okay, 1099Cs. While you're waiting for the 1099Cs to arrive, there's going to be a delay because of this COVID junk and the post office saying they got problems with mail. Do your research. Start here. Okay? That's the first thing you need to do. Order the 1099Cs. Ladies and gentlemen, Section A. Assessment and collection after limitation period. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you are going to read this stuff and you're not going to get it because, ooh, this is going to be like gobbly googly gobbly googly. Okay? So let's help you out. We're going to tell you how to read. We're going to tell you how to read statute. We're going to tell you how to read legalese. Now watch how I do. The term overpayment includes that part of the amount of the payment of any internal revenue tax which is assessed or collected after the expiration of the period of limitations properly applicable thereto. Huh? What does that mean? That, that, that don't mean nothing, do it? Okay, now watch when I read it this way. The term overpayment includes that part of the payment which is assessed or collected after the expiration of the stupid period applicable to it at that time. So the term overpayment means that any payment over the amount of taxes that has been collected, and so anything over that amount is an overpayment assessed or collected after the expiration of the period limiting properly applicable there too, I meaning the tax year. So the overpayment applies to anything in excess over what was a due. It was originally due them. That's an overpayment, okay? So if you gave them too much tax credits, if you applied too much tax credit, oh, no, I ain't carrying that forward. Oh, God, no, I'm going to carry 90% forward, but 10%, I ain't carrying that 10% forward. No, you're going to give me my 10%, mother, okay? Dollar for dollar. It's an overpayment. Got to do the research, ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to show you. I want you to pay attention. Excessive credits, you see, overpayment includes any amount in excess, assess, no, access, excessive credits. Now we're talking about the overpayment. Let's make sure of this, okay? Now let's do that same rule of reading statute. If the amount allowable as credits under part subpart C of part four of subchapter A of chapter one relating to refundable credits, it sees the tax imposed by subtitle A reduced by credits allowable under subparts A, B, D, G. Such part four of such part four, the amount of such excess shall be considered an overpayment. All right, that was gobbledygook. Now let's read it the correct way. The amount of allowable credits relating to refundable credits exceeds the tax imposed reduced by credits allowable the amount of such excess shall be considered an overpayment so the amount of allowable credits it is refundable tax credits if it exceeds the tax imposed what the tax you owe and so when you do that they're going to reduce it by the credits allowed under these subparts and whatever is left over shall be considered an overpayment, and you get a refund. Okay. The next section talks about child, foreign resident, no type of credit. Not for us. Oh, we here we go. Now this is going to be some really gobbly gookly googly gobbly gook. Okay. You see, it's only three sections, ladies and gentlemen. So it's not going to be a hard read. Pay attention. The rule where no tax liability. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not English. That's why they don't have to make it, place it in the proper syntax. So those of you who are using syntax grammar with legalese, you are applying the wrong thing to the wrong set of words. Legalese is not English. Syntax grammar does not work with legalese. I'm going to prove it to you. 
an amount paid as tax shall not be considered not to constitute an overpayment solely because or by reason of the fact that there is no tax liability in respect to which such an amount was paid shall not be considered not to con constitute shall not be considered not to constitute what the shall not be considered not to constitute what sentence are you trying to put together should it not say shall not be considered and shall not constitute an overpayment sold by reason of the fact that there is no tax liability respecting which such amount was paid let's read it the correct way the amount paid as tax well wait hold on the amount paid as tax shall not be considered an overpayment solely on the reason of the fact that there is no tax liability okay so in order for it to be construed or constitute an overpayment there must be something else going on watch this in order to be construed as a tax liability notice this excess of credits the amount of allowable credits under this subpart relating to refundable credits exceeds the tax imposed. Reduce the tax credits allowable under this subpart. The amount of such excess shall be considered an overpayment. Now, if it's just solely because there is no tax liability, uh -uh, they're saying it has to be based on the fact that the excess, pay attention, the excess credits if the allowable exceeds the tax imposed, it reduced the credits allowable in each section, the amount of such excess shall be considered an overpayment. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to be writing off your taxes, this is what you need to know. This is why you can write off your taxes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, yai, 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 I'm sorry, we did something else today. For those of you who have uh, child support, watch this. I put in transferable tax credits, social services. What I'm doing this is because I know I messed it up, but let's let's just go. Now, okay, because it's going to give us Moss Adams, and I don't want that. I don't want them to explain transferable. Uh, watch this. So we're going to put a comma, and we got social services, T-E-M-P. T E template and give me my where's my where's my all right we're gonna we're gonna do it that way uh, I don't know what's wrong with me today ladies and gentlemen I was tired I really is tired okay Tax breaks for sale, transferable tax credits explain. One way they do that is through transferable tax credits. Would work with tax credit brokers to find buyers for credits. And that's for people who want to sell it. And I know some people are going to check that out. I'm not concerned. I'm not selling tax credits. Okay. We don't care about tax credit brokers uh business tax credits we don't care about that ladies and gentlemen i put in a particular phrase earlier today and we were putting in transferable tax credits and several state departments including missouri department of revenue came up but one of them specifically said department of social services which is we know covers child welfare okay uh oh, you better believe I want GAAP for transferable tax credits. Whew. Selling tax credits to investors. 
okay? Ladies and gentlemen, all I know is it works, it works, it works. But you guys need to understand tax credits, okay? You guys need to understand tax credits. Now, I'm sorry, I would love to go on. I will do more videos on this, as I promised you guys. It's supposed to be a three-week series, but I will definitely be stretching this out so you get your three weeks worth. I've stepped away for a minute. I am dizzy right now. I have been up and up and up this week, and it's been a very bad week for me. A lot of things have not gone the way they should, and a lot of things have interfered with a lot of things. I am tired. I'm exhausted. I've been doing a lot of work around here. And let's just say I went from not being able to do much work because of the heat to overdoing it. And so now the consequences are crepping up. Okay? Not a problem. I'm about to go lay down because that's what I have to do. While I go lay down, me and my music is going to go. Go back over the beginning of this video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm positively certain it will be of benefit and help. And let's see. I'm going to see if I can. Let's see. No. Give me one second. Not there. Not there. Not there. Nope. I'm trying to get back to. No, that's my solar system. No, don't want that one. We talked about that. We talked about the public trust doctrine. Lord have mercy. Really? No, I don't know where it is, ladies and gentlemen. I have no idea where it is. That's a shame. I know we looked up something else and I want to show that to you, but I can't because it's just ain't here. The other things we looked up just ain't here. And so can't show it to you. Sorry about that. But I will be doing another video covering the other items and other issues. It's just, like I said, right now, even this right here, I was hoping this would be finished and it's installing. But if you see, it ain't finished installing, which is irritating. All right. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, tax credits are viable. If you do it right, you can get a refund, as I've been showing and saying from the very beginning. Uh, let's see. Okay, it's installed. Uh, the framework, sometimes certain programs need that in order to install, and that was the case with this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, as we suggested at the very beginning of the video, do your accounting. Create two accounts for one client. One of them, you call it the name of the client, then you put the negative mark after the name. Then the next one you call the name of the client, you put a positive mark after the name. The positive mark shows that the account is credited that the monies are deferred. You haven't brought in any monies because the person owes you. And the negative is you, six months later, discharging that debt by simply forgiving it and doing a 1099C. You're going to start doing the math. You do one client at a time, okay? One client at a time, both sides of the ledger. And then after you do all your clients, then you go back, do, uh, and you think it's backwards, it's not backwards. Then you go and you look at the GAAP information and see how to do the accrual method the correct way. Now that you've created all the accounts, you just have a little bit of corrections you have to do. But if you learn the accrual method first and then you do the accounting, it's going to take you forever. Right now, it's just a matter of you putting in numbers, Okay. At that, it's just a matter of you editing the document. So download the software, do the accounting. You don't need a tax agent to do this for you. Once you do the accounting, then you can give it to the tax agent. Say, I just need to work this out to get a refund. You can show them the code. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. Okay, look, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have to read the subparts A, B, uh, 
what is it? I don't know the subparts. Sorry, I like I said, I'm tired. So remembering stuff right now just ain't it. Okay, A, B, D, and G. You gonna have to read A, B, C. So A, B, C, D, and G. Okay, they're all. See this one. You notice how it didn't list um, C here because you're reading C, but you're gonna read A and C. Okay, A, B, C, D, and G. Get an understanding of this section. And the problem is it doesn't give me subpart four here, but I'll show you how to get to it. Hold on. Subtitle F, subchapter A, that's how you get there. This is subchapter A. Now we look for B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. Okay, these are the procedures for your write-offs, ladies and gentlemen. Overpayment of installments. Authority to make credits or refund. Okay, amounts treated as overpayment. That's what we just read. Okay, so go ahead, refund, disregarded in the administration of federal programs and federally assisted programs. Okay, we don't worry about that, but I promise you, you're going to want to go over this section. Date of allowance of refund or credit. You're going to want to go over this section. Reports of refunds and credits. Ladies and gentlemen, I promised you I would get you information. I just wish some of you may have discovered this before me, but you didn't tell it to me. I'm sitting up here giving you information for free. I'm sitting up here pointing you in a direction you weren't headed in before I pointed you in that direction. So instead of you sending me, heads up, hey, look, this is what I found. Some of you, I know some of you are doing that, but the people who are talking about the subjects that I'm focusing on, they ain't doing that. They're keeping it to themselves because of greed. I have no idea why. This is Bloodstone, ladies and gentlemen, and this thing is unreal. I just, I thought it was the Manhattans at first. So that's why I, I paused for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, individuals are getting this information and you know what they're doing? As I said before, they're holding on to it. They're hoarding it because they don't want to share it with anybody else. They're afraid that the three million or 300 million people in the United States is just all going to rush and take advantage of it all at one time. Also, those of you with mortgages, those of you with mortgages, those of you with mortgages, there are several things that you must understand. You have the right to pay off your mortgage in credits. Go back and look at your deed of trust. Go back and look at your note. You do not promise to pay them in legal tender. You do not promise to pay them with funds or an account backed by funds. You don't promise any of that. You promise to pay them in a check, money order, and or blah, blah, blah. So pay them in a money order because you wrote the agreement. Go back and look at your deed of trust. Go back and look at your note. You wrote that. I know some other idiot typed it up, but you are signing it as the author. It's an affidavit and a contract. You are signing it as the author. That's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. That is all she wrote. Now, look, I promise you guys, I wanted to stay here until this finished, but I can't because I am exhausted. So it's time for me to go lay down. I'm glad that you guys allowed me to bring this information to your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This will be up tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow. Not today because I was too tired. Okay? I was too tired. Let's see. I'm going to just do it right here. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Copy. Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do reports of refunds and credits. That's what I'm going to call this video. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, that's that Google speak thing. It was uh interfering with my music. All right, got to let y'all go. Y'all take care. 
Stay out of trouble. I'll speak to y'all next time.